Hello everybody, um, today I will be showing you a few things about how to play a security officer. I'm going to separate this probably into three parts. Um, this first part will be um, what everything is and how they work. The second one will be situations and how to use specific things in certain situations that you'll be dealing with as a security officer. And the third one, I think I'll do space law. Space law is pretty important for you for these important to be a security officer know how to use it so I just uh it's fine here on the shuttle and um security officer is the law of the station so your um your job on this station is to secure order and peace and um catch those pesky antags and by antags, I mean traitors, vampires, changelings, nuclear operatives, uh, what else is there? I don't even know. Wizards. But okay, this is security. And, um, this is the gear that you'll be spawning with when you, um, join the round. So you got your flash here, your handcuffs, your box, backpack, taser, and you also got armor and a helmet as well as these black gloves. So the first thing I would suggest you do, I have some stuff set up right there, is to move over into this area. It is your um, gear up, gear equipment, sorry, area. So you can take one of these um, lockers and open up, open them up and uh, gear up. But I already have the stuff laid out over here. So, there's a few things you can do here. You can either take off the armor, use a security jacket. They do just about the same amount of protection to any to um I think it's resistant to brute. Protects against some damage, so not that much, not very useful. And um you can pick either between a backpack and a satchel. I don't think there's any difference between the two. Just different, looks different, cosmetics. Okay, and you have your hat here. You don't really need to use this. This doesn't protect against anything unless you want to look cool. And then you have your HUD glasses right here. And they do something right here. See this little icon to the top left? So this one shows that I am a security officer. And that green flashing light around the icon on the top left means that I am mind shielded. That means that. Um, I uh, am protectant against um, conversion, I guess you could say. That could either mean from cult conversions or shadowing. So if you see a security officer with not with this flashing green light not on the top left, there might be an issue and you might want to check that out with him. Okay, and... Um, so these black gloves that you spawn with are actually fire resistant, so they protect against shock. So that's always good, but they're not really that great otherwise. They're just to cover your hands, I guess. So this is all the gear that you start with for cosmetics-wise. There's also one more thing. It's called the belt. Let's see. Here it is. The security belt. So this belt can hold a lot of things. It holds a flashlight that you can use. But usually what you want to put inside your belt is a pepper spray, flash, flash bang, your stun baton, and handcuffs. So I'll go through what each one of these do. So the first um, thing I actually want to talk about is the security hall barrier projector. So let's say you have an assistant, this guy right here, who's keep butting in on some sort of crime scene or something. So what you can do is have it in your hand and click on the ground, and it sets up a hollow barrier. And that tells people to not come in this area as well as they can't even go through it. But you can. But um, one way to actually take this down is to either click on it with that or hit it a few times. Okay, since we have that under acknowledgement, um, next thing I want to talk about is pepper spray. So pepper spray is hardly ever used, 
no one really uses that much, but it's actually pretty good against um, non-gas masks people. Since this guy has a gas mask on, I tried on him first. <laughs> then we have this guy. So let's see what happens when I take it into my hand and click on the guy. Nothing. But if I use it on this guy, <laughs> he gets knocked over. <laughs> it's actually a pretty long stung, stun, as you can see here. <laughs> okay. And, um... Then you can just combo that with anything else. But, um... So yeah, that's the pepper spray. Pepper spray has a certain amount of ingredients inside of it. If you ever run out, you can just go up here to this red um, pepper spray refiller, click on it, and it'll refill it. Okay, next is a flash. Flash is kind of has the same concept as the pepper spray, but a little bit different. Um, if they do not, if if your suspect does not have glasses on. They will be flashed, and it blinds them and um, distorts their movement. So let's see. Flash myself drops what I'm holding in my hand, and it messes up my movement for a little bit. So flash is pretty good against a um, suspect that's fleeing, I guess, because they don't know where the heck they are and will just stumble around. And um, flashes are also good against Borgs. I don't think I have a Borg here, but let me see if I can spawn one. <laughs> Just one second. CD, Borg. Hmm. Try one more time. Borgie. <laughs> no, that's not it. Anyways, but if you use a flash on a Borg, it'll become stunned and will be unable to do anything for a certain amount of time. So that's actually quite useful to, in case of rogue Borgs that have, um, are hacked. And um, let's see what else we got here. We got a flashbang. This is useful if you have um, HUD sunglasses as well as a security Bowman headset. So what you do, let's move all these three together. If there's a group of people that you don't like where they are right now, you can prime this and throw it. It has a timer, you can see. But it does that, it does a flashbang and knocks them all to the ground and does that. And then you can just go up to them and cuff them all and stuff. So, And the next thing I want to talk about is the stun baton. This is a melee stun weapon. I'll put this in my inventory. So right here, you see down here, it's a stun baton. So what you want to do is click on it, and it is now on. So when it's off, if you and you hit someone, it says it's prodded with the stun baton. Luckily, it was off. And one thing you really don't want to do is have harm intent with the stun baton. And you'll just beat them, <laughs> and that's not very good to uh, people to see <laughs> yourself as a security officer um, beating people like that. Okay, so what you want to do is click on the sun ton, says on, and have help and ten on. So when you tap them, it says stunned. So. Um, one thing I also suggest is not having harm intent unless you are attacking someone who's trying to kill you or something, I don't know. But if you have harm intent on, you will beat them and stun them. As you can see there. So that's pretty nice to use. That's going to be one of your main um, tools to use as a security officer. And um, what you usually do is that you click on this um, stun baton, 
tap someone with it, and then use these handcuffs here to cuff them. And when someone's cuffed like this, they cannot um, grab anything out of their backpacks or can't even put anything in their hands. So it's very good to transport someone to security with cuffs. And the reason, and the way you actually pull someone like this is you control click on them. Because um, if you do uh, this pull verb on someone and pull them like this, it's very slow and they have a better chance to escape. Because if you hit someone, like run into someone accidentally, they can break free of that grab and um, they'll be able to run away. And that'll just make your life harder. So always control click when you're um, dragging someone to break because um, it's faster and it's more secure. And this is processing right here, so you just boop. But we'll get into space law and how to do all that um, processing and jail time uh, in my third segment. But it'll be, all be in the same video, so yeah. Okay, and um, one thing you want to know is um, how to remove someone's head uh, handcuffs. So what we want to do is click on their um, character and hold that click. So like click and hold, hold that click that you click, and drag it onto yourself brings up this verb of what they're all they're wearing and here at the very bottom you'll see handcuffed and hit remove and you'll remove the handcuffs you can also do this with cable coil so this is a zip tie cable restraints you can also remove it And can be used again but if someone resists out of a uh, cable restraint um, it'll break it so I wouldn't say you really use these that much always real and your handcuffs better more than that so yep and um, another thing here that we have is a security gas mask you put that on your map um, your mask icon and up here on the top left you can see there's a change phrase adjust security gas mask so this goes up and down if it's in this way, you cannot breathe through it for in, through internals. Put it up. And um, change phrase, you can change what it says. So if I hit halt, it'll do that. <laughs> and um, if you change the phrase, it um, changes what you will say. So if you want to be cool and uh, want to scare your um, suspects by chasing them, use that. Looks like the last thing we have here is an energy bola. There's real bolas in this game, but um, probably won't be making those. You'll probably just be using these energy bolas, and these are found in this vendor called Sectech. And those good zip ties, handcuffs here. I guess I can also talk about the safety muzzle, but you won't be using this that much. So basically, if you're someone's trying to escape, or you just want to um, have a bit more safer takedown, I guess, than someone running around full speed, um, one thing you want to do is have it in your hand, do the throw and catch, and th throw it at someone. And he triggered the, tr the thing, so he cannot... Hold on, let's show you. So he's now stuck in walk. So he's stuck in walk. This is very slow, so it's a lot easier to be hit by a taser or, you know, anything. So yeah, those are very useful if you're trying to catch antags. Okay, and um, I guess we can try the muzzle as well. So the safety muzzle, you're probably not going to use this unless someone is being very annoying with their spamming screams in the game, I guess. So what you want to do is put it on mask slot, and you, you can lock it. <laughs> so now they cannot scream. Oh wait, no. This is sorry. This is only for um, vampires. They can't use their ability to do supersonic scream or whatever. So that's nice.
think that's the gag. Yeah, the gag does that. You can't scream with it. Okay. And um, our last um, equipment item here that you'll be most likely using is called the hybrid taser. So this taser has two modes. It has the yellow one, which is tase, and the blue one is disable. So I'll show you right here. There's pros and cons to both of them, so let's just start with the yellow one. So if I click on someone with the taser, it shoots a projectile, and they're stunned. And they fall down, they can't do anything for about, I think like five or six seconds. And then they get back up, like that. And here's the blue one. You have to shoot one projectile. And this does stamina damage. So if you shoot them, usually about three times, they'll fall over. So this is good, and you can also just chain it so they can stay down as far as you want for as long as you want. And uh, pretty good for keeping someone down to cuff. Uh oh, it looks like my um, taser is flashing red. It does a click when I click. I click on someone. So if that ever happens to you, you can always just go back to security. And see these wall rechargers. And you just click on it with it, and it will be charging. So the pros of the taser is that it's a one hit tase, and they'll go down for a good long, good amount enough so you can cuff them. So this is nice to easily be able to capture someone. But the con is if you miss, uh, there's a slight um, delay to shooting the taser. So if you shoot, if you miss, I'm clicking right now. It takes about one second delay or something. So. People are able to evade tasers a bit better than disablers. Like that. So, yeah. And, um... So this is all the basic gear you're going to be using as a security officer. There's, there's, um... Also these items here I left out here. They're called, uh... You got the laser gun and the riot shotgun. These items will be located in the security armory up here. Only the warden or the head of security has access to this. So you can't get in without the warden or head, head of security. Since this one's charged, I'll just put it back. So one thing I'll talk about first is the laser gun. Or energy gun. There's two different types of these. The, the energy gun has two um, modes. And the laser gun only has one. So the energy gun has the blue, which we saw before, which is disable, but also has red, which fires a laser and does damage. And you can kill someone with this, so this is actually called a lethal gun. So if the station's code red, um, maybe code blue, there's something going on in the station, the board and the security might give you that allow you to take that and it's a good lethal weapon to use if you're getting attacked by someone okay and then we also have the riot shotgun I'm just gonna jet jettison all of the shells here as you can see here I have four different types of shells the red ones are buckshot the purple ones are rubber the blue are tranquilizers and the green are beanbags so let's just see what the green one does. I loaded it in the shotgun. To pump it again. <laughs> Click on someone. He's got shot by a beanbag slug. And what these beanbags do is a um brings them stamina damage, just like the disabler. So you're not really gonna be using beanbag shells, but they also do a bit of um, brute damage as well, so be careful if you use too many of them, it might break someone's chest or something. And uh, let's try a rubber shot. This works just just about the same as um, beanbag, but it shoots many. And actually does a lot better job of keeping someone down. <laughs> so these are the... If you ever want to bring someone down like this, I don't understand why you'd be using a ride shotgun in the first place, but just using a 
rubber pellet bullet is, um, sl sorry, slug is pretty good. And now we get the blue slug. It's called tranquilizers. So if you shoot someone with this, they get hit. And, um, they'll start feeling a bit sleepy. And then they'll fall actually asleep. Let's see if I can make this effect greater. See there, he says drooling. So let's just um, check him out. So his vision's all foggy, and he's getting stamina damage right here. And there he goes, he's asleep. So I'd, I'd say this is pretty good against vampires or something, so... We'll get into situations later in my next segment. Okay. So let's look at the red ones. These are called buckshot shells. And these ones are pure lethal. They deal a lot of damage. The farther you um, shoot, the less of a chance of all the pellets to hit. See that one, uh, a few of them missed. So if I stand right next to someone... about every one of them hit and they fell over and also broke a bone so these are usually used for any antags you'd think of that are um, shoot to kill I guess you'd say so um, yeah this is just um, there's also other um, slugs called uh, well they're actually called slugs and um, they're basically just like the buckshot shell, but they only shoot one projectile and it does a lot more damage. It probably does just about as much damage combined as all of the buckshot projectiles, so... Yep, that's just about all the items you're going to be using as a security officer. I don't think there's anything else. And, um... I'll come back and, uh, tell you guys some situations that you might be needing to use these, these things for. And, uh, yeah, I'll catch you in a little bit. Okay, and we're back. So, um, I'll be showing you some, uh, situations that you might be dealing with when you're a security officer. I made a few, um, hopefully we'll, uh, check them out and see, uh, what would be the best thing to do. So, the first situation I'd like to talk about is, let's just say... The station has a shadowing threat. Basically what shadowings are, they're eld eldritch, is that what they're called? Monsters or whatever? And they um, thrive in the darkness. So, and they're gonna try to thrall all the crew until they um, become ascendant and destroy everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, so, um, one thing about Shadowlands, though, is that they have ability that can turn off all lights. I Besides, I think, this one. But, um... So one way to fight Shadowlands would be to equip a flare. Because they cannot turn that off. And if you're going to run in and try to find these Shadowlands in here... Um... Oh, look, there's one right there. He's going to... He's gonna, um, yeah, he's gonna <laughs> glare you, and then it'll freeze you. And since I'm taking damage here, is because I have a flare on, as you can see when I turn off the dark sight. It didn't turn off the flare. But, um, they can still, uh, freeze you like that and you're not able to move or anything so you might like I turn off so running in to fight shadowlings as a single person is not the best way to do it so I have my trusty security pod pilot right here Johnny Buzzard <laughs> so for both here we can rush in together and then that takes longer it's better to have two people because the chance of one of you guys not getting cuffed is, um, better. 
And another thing to use against Shadowlings would be um, to use laser guns. Projectiles are okay and all, but um, Shadowlings can heal in the dark, so um, it's not very that useful. But um, laser guns do a lot more damage against Shadowlings because um, they're weak to light and burns, so. Yeah, so um, if you're ever fighting a Shadowling, um, you can either buddy up with someone, well, definitely buddy up with someone, or you can uh, drag one of these emergency floodlights around the station and see how much light this fills. That is ridiculous. Let's see if you can turn it off. He cannot. <laughs> oh. Looks like he somehow did. But I can just click it and it'll turn back on. Also, a um, another thing you can use against Shadowlings. Be Beepski. And you can drag him with you. And he will, if you know what the Shadowlings ID is, you can set him for a rest. Like, um, no status. Oh, there's no security. Okay, because I spawned him. But if I set him to a rest, then Beepski would turn on and then... Let me take off his um, ID. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> yeah, so he'll do that if you drag him around and then he'll cuff him. And then while he's doing that, you can just shoot him. Because Shadowlings are, um, shoot to kill, so. If you ever see a Shadowling, do not try to arrest it, just kill it. Because they're not really containable. Because they can just fly, like, teleport away. Okay, and, um,. I have a few more examples here. So we have two fellows here. We got Ward Buttersworth and No Noel Romeo. So let's just say, for example, they can either be these guys can either be nuclear operatives or traitors. So this guy right here, he has a dual e sword. These are very problematic against new security officers. Because if he turns this on. And I'm trying to tase him. It gets reflected. And it <laughs> reflects and tases me. Or anyone that it hits into it. It also works against disablers. As you can see. And, um... So yeah, do not use any sort of like lasers, you know, tasers, anything like that against these guys that have dual e-swords. So the thing you want to do against people with e-swords, they're kind of very difficult to deal with, but projectiles work pretty good against them because they don't completely block every single projectile. So you got hit once, and block three. Okay. This guy right here, he has a martial arts scroll. It's a lot of TC, so if you see someone with this um, ability, he probably doesn't have any other tricks up his sleeve. <laughs> so um, let's see what happens when we try to shoot him. Ward Brothers Mirth deflects the projectile. He cannot be hit by ranged weapons. 
So any range weapons you try to shoot him with, it will do no damage. So what you want to do is to... You can do this, it's always nice to hit someone with a bullet. But you can either use... Definitely use your stun baton when you're trying to get him because he can't block against that. And then you can just stun him with the stun baton and arrest him. Or um, you can throw a flashbang at him or use pepper spray, you know, like that. And then you book him. But um, one thing uh, also about these um, dual sword users is that... They also have a chance to deflect ranged. So let's see here. I mean, uh, sorry. Um, deflect against melee. So if I run up to this guy trying to stun him, well, that was pretty lucky. But there's a pretty, there's a pretty random chance of being able to hit someone with a dual sword. So you cannot just rely on your stomaton getting every single hundred percent hit on him, because it will not work. And, um, yeah, but, um, if any of these people have, you know, like, a, a mask, or, uh, sunglasses, these two items will not work. So, um, flashbangs are always good to use. So if I, well, look, if I take off my security headset, okay, maybe not, but if you have glasses on, and your security gear on, you won't be affected by, um, flashbangs. Okay, and I have one more situation I created <laughs> to, um, show you guys. So, um, if you ever have a cult, and you know where this cult is, where their base is, when the best thing to do, if, if there's a lot of people inside a, um, like a area and are making or converting people I'd definitely say go for the flashbang because um knocks them all down so let's just let me um spawn some cuffs I need one more okay so I'm going to delete this door since I don't have access, but this is just because I have, I'm playing on a private part of this server. So, um, let's just say that there's a huge cult in here. I didn't re represent it very well, but there's a huge cult in this room right here. And you want to breach and arrest everyone in it. So the best way I would say would be to... Let's delete that. Would be to run in. Throw a flashbang. <laughs> run out. <laughs> Or you can just run in, I guess. It doesn't... And then... Yeah, flashbangs are very useful in um, big crowds. As you can see there, I ran in and was able to stun two of them and be able to cup them before they could even get back up, so... Or you can just run in with tasers and stuff. I wouldn't advise using lethals against um, cultists unless they um, are definitely winning and are um, being able to evade capture. Because cults are basically still crew. So, um, yeah, you don't want to kill crew because your actual crew members will get very angry and might, might get yelled at or something. But, um, yeah. So, um, these are just some situations, I guess, um, one thing I forgot to show you, um, in the, uh, previous section would be the blindfold. And this is useful, let's just say, hold on, let me, um, show you here. <clears throat> um, spawn human. Human carbon. Direct control. Traitor panel. Vampire. So vampires, if you're ever dealing with a vampire, they're going to run at you and glare you. And that'll knock you down. And um, that's not very good because then they can just 
cuff you and then take you off your headset drink your blood so that's not very nice so if you're ever a security officer in a um, vampire round um, especially if they're not um, especially if they're not uh, fully powered yet what you want to do is to tase them oh, I don't have any more cuffs hold on We're going to definitely need two people to deal with a vampire like this because um, you always have someone on standby because they can just clear you. So if I'm trying to arrest him like this, and then he can just clear me and run away. But he won't get far because he has cuffs on, but still, it's very annoying. But, um, so what you want to always have is a um, second officer with you, or a Borg, or a Pupski, or whatever to um, stun him, so. But the blindfold's useful on vampires because they cannot use that ability if they have a blindfold on. So let's try to use glare on me. Nope, says you're blindfolded. So if you're ever dealing with vampires, using a blindfold on um, your uh, little vampire buddy is um, pretty nice so um, yeah that's some situations that um, you're most likely to see um, there's definitely a few other ones but um, I'm not really able to go through all of them in this video but um, if you ever have any questions about a certain situation that, you, that you've been that you dealt with and you didn't know what to do I could probably try to answer it but um, yeah we're gonna go into the third segment which would be uh, space law because space law is very important and um, I'll see you there because uh, it's gonna take me some time but uh, it'll be right, right right after this so for you guys so bye hello everybody and we are back for our third part of this tutorial. I'm going to be talking about space law, how it applies to how you're going to arrest people. Um, just a word of warning, the space law concept is very long, very concise, and uh, take forever to talk about, so I'm just going to go through a few things. Um, the best suggestion for you to master security space law would be just to go to the wiki, review it, and have it in a different window every time you play security. Okay, so how exactly are you going to be able to use these um, tools that you've been given by your gracious server gods to uh, arrest someone or um, how do you even play? So right now, if we look at this um, fire alarm here, it tells us what code it is or maybe not. <laughs> Well, anyways, it's supposed to tell you um, the green bar here shows that it's code green. So code green means that privacy laws are in effect, which basically means you can't go run, run up to someone, shoot them and tase them and cuff them and bring them to processing. You have to, um, it can't be probable, uh, you have to have probable cause to do that. So let's just say this guy's wanted here. I already gave him the wanted status. Let's just remove his suit ties for a moment. So you can't just, um, I guess you could, but probably wouldn't be very nice. But you could um, walk up to this person and say, hey, you're wanted for blah, 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 blah. You're going to need to come in for me, come in with me, or go in for a search. If you have probable cause to search someone or arrest someone, you're able to do it, but you can't just do it to anyone. So that's the difference between green and blue. So code blue means that I can have weapons out and just run around, which is not a good idea having your stomach on and taser or whatever gun you have out. But code blue means that um, you're able to search anybody. Privacy laws are not in effect anymore. So I could run up to this person, the chef, without any reason and say, hey, I need to search you. And the way you search someone 
is you check their backpack. See what they got inside there. Oh my gosh, this guy is contraband. Oh no, what are we going to do? Let's just check his radio. And his PDA. These are the three main things you really want to check. You can also check his pockets, but I didn't add anything in his pockets. But the thing you want to check in your um, PDA is messages to see if he sent anything. And also, um, sometimes um, Antags, le like traders, leave their um, PDA uplinks open with what they can buy. And um, in order to check their headset, you just click on it. And and there's and then there's a channel that says... Um, <laughs> If there's a channel that says syndicate, that means that they're using syndicate comms. So, it's always good to check their earpieces as well. But since this guy, our chef here, wow, that beep ski is very rude. Anyways, um, in, in, uh, since this guy has contraband on him, we're going to arrest him. And since he's being very nice and not moving for us, we'll cuff him and bring him to security. And since we already searched this guy, we don't really need to do it, but what we're going to do is bring him to processing and basically we're going to buckle him in because we don't want him running around. But we're going to best thing to do if you ever find contraband on someone or something criminal in, criminalizing is to either tell your um, warden or head of security that you found a guy with the contraband and uh, basically since um, actually you know what I'm just going to talk about um, three things here first these things right here these are code green contra contraband basically that's what they're called non-contraband and these things you cannot arrest somebody over a syndicate balloon a syndicate soap <laughs> and this um, surgery buff duffel bag there's a lot of other things that are not contraband but they look like they are so I highly suggest looking at the space law wiki to look at all the items and here we got contraband so these are this is yellow and this means that if someone has more than two pieces of contraband on them, they can be brigged as an enemy of corporation. So, if you find someone, like for example, um, if this guy right here did not have this EMAG but had like, let's just say, two pistols, he would still be brigged as an enemy of a corporation. But if he only has one piece of this contraband, which is yellow, like he only has the pistol and he didn't do anything else, he would he would be brigged, but not permit. So let's just say that this guy only had that one Stretchkin pistol. So we drag him over here to the cells. Take anything that he would use to, um, since he doesn't have anything, but if you're ever going to break someone in a cell like this, be sure to remove anything from their pockets as well as belts that have tools in them because these people will most likely try to break out. <laughs> so, But um, you really don't need to use these three things on them. It's just a waste of time, really. But I guess you could take their ID and change it with the prisoner ID, but if they're just getting brigged in for, let's say, less than 30 minutes, I don't see very much point of... Uh, putting all that stuff on him. But we're gonna permit this guy, I mean, uh, we're gonna put him on here. And these little screens right here tell you the cell. So since this guy had one piece of contraband on him, we're gonna brig him for, let's just say 10 minutes because this is only one example, but this is a major crime. So a major crime can be punishable by a sentence of 10 to 15 minutes. There's a whole bunch of other things that people can do to get this sentence such as inciting riots, kidnapping, sabotage, aggravated assault, theft, assault of an officer. And people can't really be executed for these, but um, it's pretty bad to do. <laughs> so um, let's just here, we're gonna do input time, minutes, 10, <laughs> zero, zero. 
We're going to um, flash him for good measure. And his name is Mike Privet. Now he's stuck in here. One thing you really want to do is to make sure you get the cuffs back. Because you don't really want someone to be buckle cuffed in your cell. That's not very nice. So we booked that guy. So um, the last thing I missed here is um, these are class S contraband. So if someone has at least one of these, they can be um, booked for, as an enemy of the corporation and can be permabrigged. Or ex well, you could be a permabrig. There's there's specific things people need to do to be able to be executed, such as requesting an execution when they're permabrig, or committing a few crimes. Let's just say, for example, uh, murder, mm, manslaughter, grand sabotage. So they'd have to be um, requested to um, request an execution like that. But if someone murders someone, you have full legal uh, um, ability to execute them. And I'll show you how to um, where that is here in a sec. But let's just say that um, that uh, <laughs> I'm going to be planning some evidence here. But um, this fellow right here had this sniper. And um, he killed a few people, and uh, we caught him. So what we're going to do <laughs> is bring him into the brig. Wow, that really... Well, those handcuffs are on there, definitely. But um, we're going to bring him to the processing, and we're going to la 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 la. We're going to go through, tell, you know, head of security, warden, whoever's in charge that this guy killed someone, had class S contraband. So what we do would give him the sentence. <laughs> we bring him the sentence. Drag him over here to the left. And put him in these this area. And this is when you start using most likely going to be using these prisoner gears. Prisoner uniforms and stuff. So you're going to full strip the guy. They don't need any of these IDs any anything that they're wearing anymore because they're degenerate. <laughs> then we'll just, um, these are solitary confinement, so you can, if someone's being very annoying as in PERMA, you just put them in here, and they can't do anything, so they can't escape. But right here is Perma, so what you do would be to bring them in here, you know, uh, actually, bring them in here. Now since he's in Perma, you can take the cuffs off while he's flashed. And then he can do whatever the heck he wants in here. So this is where you're going to be putting most of your enemy corporation, unless your head of security award and is trigger happy with executions. So, um, yeah, always be sure to come and look in perma every now and then to make sure they're not trying to escape. If a per if a prisoner is try actually escapes, or I guess attempts to escape, you can um, execute them. But let's just say that this guy killed someone and had a class S contraband on him. And let's just say he requests an execution. So what we would do is bring him over in here, execution room. There's a few ways to do this. Um, there's this illegal injection area over here. There's the electric chair. And um, there's also firing squad, but um, yeah. So um, in order to execute someone, you're going to um, need the head of security's approval, captain's approval, one of those, or the uh, magistrate. 
And, um... So what we will do... Is execute him. <laughs> but yeah, you're probably not going to be executing that many people like this. Um... Yeah, but just to show you how that how that's done right there. So, um, so what do you do with all this contraband that you find laying around that you get from uh, these pesky antags? Well, the first thing is this this room over here to the right is evidence storage. This is mostly this the um, either the warden's or the detective's job, but since I'm literally the only person on this server right now, um, I'll just do it. <laughs> So, um, so what you want to do is to use these evidence bags. Some of these are too big, like the chainsaws, they won't fit in, but, and, um, I just bag them. And then, um, one thing I like to do is, um, I like to put the name of the person that had these, this contraband on here. So I would use a hand labeler label text and let's just say Bob Jensen and then do EOC parentheses EOC like this enemy of the corporation and then I would click on the bags and now when you hover over there with your mouse you see on the bottom left it says evidence bag Bob Jensen EOC and then I like to um, put these in the same locker Of the, per of the same person that had these items because for organization so um, yeah so if you're ever gonna um, arrest someone just make sure you check to see what code you were on and um, let's see a few things here um, for example if there's a cultist and uh, you kill them you can't just leave them in morgue or whatever you have to try to get them revived because they're part of the crews, so you need to um, revive them. And also, here's a really good um, thing right here. So if you have, you notice how these boots are really loud? Yeah, it kind of alarms antagonists that you're coming. So take your boots, put some tape on it, and you just taped your shoes. And wow, there's no sound left on them. So you can be super sneaky cop. So that's very nice. Yeah, there's a lot to do with sp um, space law. There's a lot to do with, with security. You're basically going to be the people that people... Um, you're going to be the person that people place a lot of blame on when you're playing. So um, don't be discouraged if you have a bad round. Like, station's crazy. People are yelling at you, telling you you're terrible. Um, yeah, it's a learning process definitely for security. So... Um, I know I didn't cover very much. There's still so much stuff in security. It'd be a very long video if I did. But um, if you have any specific questions um, in game, I definitely suggest doing an admin help, mentor help. If you have any questions for me from security, I'll try to answer them the best I can. But um, I think this will be the end of the video. And uh, I hope something here in this whole video uh, gave you some new knowledge on how to play. And uh, I'll see you hopefully in the next one. Bye.